everyone welcome back to cyber Security tv uh, this week we're going to talk about something else like some different topic which is about privacy anonymity and dark web uh, i know this is sort of like a topic which not be, uh, heavily discussed and 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 some of you must be wondering when someone says how do you access the dark web services and and we see all this news about selling and buying of the data in the dark web so I'm going to start with the very basic in this episode and, and, and slowly we'll go into the details of how do you access all these details and how do you uh, anonymously access these services. So first off, let me let me clarify what is the difference between the privacy and anonymity because a lot of people have confusion. So the privacy is where the person is not observed by the others. So uh, give you an example, let's say you are in your house and, and, and like, you know, to, to get have the privacy, you will prob prob from the neighbors, you would probably like, you know, uh, uh, have the curtains or the blinds to from on the windows and doors. So people outside cannot see what you are doing inside the house, right? That's a privacy. So they, they know that you are in the house, but they don't know what you're doing in the house. That's That's called privacy. Now anonymity is is completely opposite. That means the people would know that you are doing some activities, but they don't know who are doing that activity. So, for example, let's say you are you are wearing a mask or or a kind of a mask, and and washing your car in the garage. Uh, people would know that oh somebody is washing the car, but they don't know who is washing the car. That's an anonymity. So that's a there's a, that's a basic difference between what's a privacy and what's anonymity. This this is very very uh, critical uh, when you when you access and when you think about like you know uh, the dark web services. Uh, how do you maintain both of this uh, to be able to uh, keep yourself anonymous and and still be able to access all the services? Okay, so since we have this clear. Uh, the next question comes why does the normal activity that we perform uh, through our through our local local system uh, we cannot have privacy or anonymity uh, the reason for that is suppose you have uh, like you know you're using some some basic browser like chrome or firefox and you're sending a request uh, to the server let's say google.com uh, which is of course first going to go to the ips uh, your internet service provider and then it will go to the maybe different nodes and then finally hit to the google.com and then it will come back to the it will send the response back now at various points uh, especially when the traffic leaves your browser and goes to the isp and then it goes to the server it's a various uh, there are various data points where your isp could sniff what you are doing uh, there is a government agency who can sniff what activity you are doing and who is doing it has all the details about like you know where the traffic is coming from your ip address and and all the information and same thing uh like in you know, the google as well like if you are let's say going to the google.com it can also have uh, it can also find all the details uh, about you know who is making the request and, and where the request going so there is no privacy uh, or anonymous aspect and and now nowadays you must have seen a lot of uh, pop-ups in in various websites that you're visiting that it's uh, they're using the cookies for the privacy uh, not the privacy but actually collecting the data uh, whether you you are okay with that or not so those are the those are the reasons uh, uh, dark web services you cannot access with this normal browsers because of course uh, you are not anonymous your identity will not be uh, will not stay anonymous or private so to access the dark web or, or what do we what, what do we mean by the dark web so the dark web services uh, are, are made up of two two aspect one we need the anonymizing service so uh, the service which would keep everything anonymous uh, whatever we do and then we have to use the private services now there are not many services out there uh, who can who can make sure that our, our, our activity remains the private or our activity remains the anonymous and and that's why there are very selected uh, number of services which we're gonna use throughout this this uh, course or like you know next few videos uh, which I'll show you uh, how do you access the dark web services and 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 the and the third most important thing which probably I haven't noted here is the security as well uh, you have your tools and everything but if you 
do not know how to keep it secure uh, probably an attacker or a hacker can can compromise uh, on like you know the tools that you're using and you will not be no longer be anonymous or or they will also reveal like you know all the files or data that you have on the system so it will also not be private so that's why uh, the security is also very critical aspect when you when you try to access the dark web but uh, uh, other than that, uh, just make sure you're using these private services. Now, so the first, uh, of course, whenever we we call about like you know private and being anonymous, the 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 like you know the main thing which comes to the mind is that onion router. It's called Tor. So the Tor uh, is is the bunch of network servers to improve the anonymity and privacy, right? And I'm sure you have used like Tor at various point in your career. Uh, so Tor, my, Tor browser itself might not be uh, new to you, but maybe I'll just give you a little bit of brief about how the Tor works, and then in the following episodes we'll talk more about how to use that. So yeah, the Tor essentially is the network of servers to improve the anonymity. So it's a bunch of servers uh, made uh, to keep yourself anonymous, and it's actually designed by the U.S. Army to keep their communication secure. Uh, like you know uh, of course uh, for the for the uh, different purpose but yeah of course uh, that's that's why the tor was evolved uh, so why why tor is secure uh, or, or why do we need to use tor again uh, we, we we saw this image earlier in the in the video uh, but but here the here is the concern right so when you are accessing uh, your uh, any any site google.com from your browser uh, uh, server can obviously locate where the your location browser and OS that's like basic thing any any system any any website can track you down so your your privacy and anonymous anonymity is is going into the trash right away now other thing which also uh, systems like Google and Facebook can also track is what are the previous activities that you have been doing now they can map uh, what are the activities that you have done right now and based on your identity it can also map what are the previous activities that you've done and and based on that it can give you the adver advertisement that that's their main business so of course they'll they'll serve the advertise based on your liking and and your browsing history uh, which is which is fine but then another thing is activities outside of this website can also be tracked so for example let's say you do not have Facebook profile or you do not have LinkedIn profile but let's say you are visiting a website where it says okay share via facebook linkedin or twitter or whatever those website has a piece of code from this this google google code uh, this piece of google code which is also tracking your activity so in the background they are still going to make a profile even though you do not have a public profile of facebook and they will map the identity to you uh, based on your activity so it's not that only if you have the profile with the Facebook or Twitter, uh, they have your data, but no, uh, irrespective, uh, if you are visiting any of the website where it's running the Google or, or Twitter code, your, uh, your profile is still created and your activities are still being tracked. So that's why we need to use something like Tor, which is uh, totally uh, like you know, anonymous. So how uh, Tor uh, pretty much works is like you have a Tor client, which is in your system, you have a Tor browser. Then Tor has mainly three intermediate server uh, for any communication. So first, uh, the browser will, will connect to the Tor uh, network and then it will connect to the another bounce off from that to the middle relay and then it will go to the exit and which will send a uh, request to the destination. Now you must be wondering what are the green arrows and the red arrows. So uh, the green arrows, so here this one, uh, so although it says encrypted by Tor, but this one, uh, for example, Tor client, you can have like, you know, HTTPS extension in your browser. Uh, the site itself is uh, TLS protected. Uh, anyway, so that's obviously encrypted. So Tor will uh, make sure, uh, so even like, you know, let's say your ISP still tracks or, or perform man in the middle attack uh, to intercept what, where the traffic is coming from or, or what you're trying to access, uh, they will only be able to see the, that you are trying to access the Tor service. They won't know which end website that you're trying to access, such as google.com. So that's one thing you definitely want to understand. So even though uh, you type google.com, it will only see that you're accessing Tor and then it will go 
through three different servers uh, they have a bunch of like in this network they have tons of the other servers but for this example uh, for any request it's going to go through the three different servers and finally when it reaches to the exit relay uh, that's why the traffic is unencrypted but that really doesn't matter because at that time you are completely anonymous because destination will only see the last node where the traffic or the request is coming in it's not going to see where the actual uh, like you know it's not going to see where the, the client who actually made a request that's why it's very anonymous in terms of uh, how the traffic is reached to the destination and how the response is also received by the client uh, so that way uh, again like you know when the response is received to the client ISP would not know uh, which website uh, or uh, has sent the response back to the client it's only going to see the tall record that it's going like you know sending a response back to the client so this is like you know the the main uh, if you haven't if you haven't tried tall yet uh, I would definitely highly recommend to do that just download it it's open source uh, and you can play around and see even even though if you are not interested in dark web or and the services but if you still want to keep your uh, privacy and anonymity then yeah definitely go and and, uh, and search for the Tor browser and download and install it uh, it will provide you uh, much more uh, privacy than all the other browsers uh, but yeah that's all I wanted to talk about in this episode maybe I wanted to keep it very brief and uh, uh, in the future episodes I'll, I'll talk in more details on how the online routing works and, and what are the services and how to access them how to keep yourself secure etc etc in this whole series uh, I'll create a new playlist for that so you can easily follow along if you have any other questions feel free to let me know uh, please hit the thumbs up button if you haven't already subscribe to my channel and I'll see you all next Monday bye bye